they come out at night mostly. Mostly. Nuke from Aliens, everyone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Go Watch a Movie, Episode 7, uh, Space. This is the theme of this episode, and we saw two fantastic space movies. Um, first, a little visit from audible.com. You can go there and get all your favorite audiobooks and even get one for free. Sign up for 30 days for free and get a free audiobook. Uh, you like aliens? They have a bunch of the alien movies on audiobook. You can listen to those as you're going. And uh, yeah, that's Audible Trial forward slash GWAM. AudibleTrial.com forward slash GWAM. And we saw Arrival. A fantastic space movie. I'm going to start this by saying space, the space genre is one of my favorite uh, genres of all time. Space and space pirates and all that, invasion movies. And uh, My first thought when I saw the trailer was they're going to rip off District 9. I could not have been farther from the truth, uh, more wrong in saying that. Rob? Yeah, I, I didn't really know what to expect from the trailer, but it did definitely drew me in and I wanted to see what was going to happen. I didn't realize the direction they were going to take. Yeah. So, and, I, and I appreciate it. It was like a new direction. I don't think that they've really done this in a movie before. It, it blew my mind. I, oh, yeah. I'm introduce ourselves? No. I'm Kelvin. <laughs> and I'm Robert. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I'm just so excited about this movie because it was uh, very original and took a, a, a quite a t uh, turn. And yeah, just kind of. Caught me off guard. Uh, where do we start with it? Let's see the arrival. Um, I guess just arrival. Uh, like I said, it reminded me of District, District 9 simply because, you know, you have ships floating to just show up and they're just floating there. Mm -hmm. And uh, District 9 was very original as well, but this was not in any way, shape, or form District 9. Uh, that, that, uh... Lois, she, uh, <laughs> she likes those superheroes. She's in Batman v Superman, and she mm -hmm. had herself Superman and Bruce. Now she's getting a little piece of Hawkeye. Yeah, right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy Reiner in this, and he does a great job. I, I love his, uh, his acting. His comedic timing is great, too. Uh, but, yeah, this movie... Uh, she is a language interpreter? Yeah, like a language expert of yeah. sort. Uh, and she basically is called upon by the government and they use her because they used her once before and now she has high security clearance to kind of give you that so they're not just taking a language specialist from nowhere. Uh, but, and then they take her to one of these, one of 12 ships that are hovering in specific locations around the planet. Very original looking ships. Yes. Like, I don't, you don't really see this in other movies. It, yeah, it wasn't a flying saucer. It was like a well, weird... What, I thought, at first I thought it was like an elongated egg, but then when it turns, you can see that it's kind of like like there's like hollow there. Yeah, it's like it goes a, in. It's like a spoon, like basically like a... Without the handle, it's like a spoon without the handle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was... A very interesting ship and very cool when you go inside even though the inside is kind of one note it's still different enough to intrigue you mm -hmm. uh, so these things are these ships are hovering just slightly above uh, the ground I get not just slightly a little bit more than that They're like what 20 feet up yeah basically 20 feet uh, people use scissor lifts to lift themselves up into the ship and then once you're up so high the gravity shifts and you have to get out of the scissor lift and it kind of fixes itself, I guess. Yeah. So you're going up, and then all of a sudden you're... We're sideways. Sideways, which is right ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then you go into a chamber, which has a giant glass kind of a... Wall, basically. Yeah, big glass wall full of smoke and fog and everything, which I'm assuming was their atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, and so... They go get her and uh, Hawkeye, and uh, <laughs> they. Cause he is a uh, astrophysicist specialist of some kind. Mm -hmm. He knows space and stars and everything. And uh, they team them those two up together, and they're supposed to crack the code. And what I what I liked was every other uh, country or nation, I guess, was also trying to crack the code of these ships. 
depois ficamos a play later. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, where do we go from there? We don't actually see the firm action. They kind of just... The aliens come up, which the aliens were a new kind of take on. Yeah, there's another... The, the creature design was very... Uh, unique. I mean, it doesn't. It didn't really make sense, which I think was a good thing because if you actually did see an alien, it hopefully wouldn't. Yeah. You know, just be like us. With, you know, biped or whatever. Yeah, but, and that's what the route everyone goes. They assume that they're going to be humanoids. You know, just mm -hmm. like us. Which this was not. What? Well, see, and that's the thing with the not jumping ahead, but with the way it turned out, and with them saying what they said, we. They want us to do mm -hmm. like could that like be an evolution? It's it's possible. Like because it was like our they look like our hands, and, and that's what we see for the majority of our, of the movie. But each finger, uh, think of our hands twenty feet or not twenty feet, but 10, 15 feet in the air, mm -hmm. and big huge versions of our hands, and they uh, each finger has like little. Octopus like yeah, <laughs> so it's weird. Their fingers could be like sturdy, so they could stand them. Where they they were like like they turn into like you know octopus mm. you know tentacles, and they can kind of fly around in their atmosphere. It was really strange. And in their bodies, you don't really get a, a glimpse of their bodies until later in the movie, and it's just this big giant blobby thing with mm. kind of a head, but you kind don't see like any eyes or or anything. It's just the hand legs up to this giant formless torso shoulders and then kind of a kind of a head silhouette you mm -hmm. know I guess but they were very interesting and they made these loud yeah it was like almost like well song or mm -hmm. something this I... deeper yeah and, and it's very cool and I, I love some of the technical jargon they get to as far as uh, discovering languages um because it's not just like she she points out I can't just go in there and say hi and then they say hi back it, it's not going to work that way and she realizes that writing words is probably the easier way to go and they explain that in detail which is above my head so I won't go into <laughs> and other countries took different approaches like one of them uh, used games mm -hmm. they taught each other to play chess somehow and so they were communicating with chess which I don't get but yeah that was <laughs> That was one attempt. <laughs> and good old America have the best because we actually got them to respond back with their written language, which she then starts to de decipher uh, throughout the movie. And their language is, they said, they don't uh, compare language and speech like we do. Mm -hmm. They're not used the same. Uh, their speech is those gurgle things, but their language, their written language, uh, is the text, I guess, for them, is, how do they word that? I don't, I don't remember exactly what they said, but they said it was like complex thought in like a uh, really small, like, symbol, basically. Like, instead of us writing out, you know, a long, complex paragraph, they were able to do that in like one symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was, he kind of equated it to, he said, imagine being able to write a paragraph from both ends using both your hands mm -hmm. and yeah so which sounds insane and yeah once impossible. again confusing I yeah. thought a lot of the movie was confusing <laughs> but it pays off in the end exactly yeah. the payoff is well worth it and uh, like I couldn't guess it for life of me I was sitting there trying to imagine where are they going with this I, st I started to get it after because she explained that once you learn uh, their written language mm -hmm. you, you can start to chemically change your own brain mm -hmm. to think the way they think and the way they thought was in a non-linear way yes so like time isn't just a straight line it's all over and happening and yeah they, they understood time and I, I, I caught on that he was they were a family with the, with the framed portrait of the kids Drawing. Right. Like, that's why I was like, oh, hey now. But still was a little confused because they, they kind of make you think that uh, she has a she has a daughter and had a husband. Yes. They make you think that happened bef before. The movie opens with a very sad story. Right. Uh, sadder than up almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this, this mother uh, is has a kid going through the motions of the kid and then all of a sudden the kid has cancer and dies. Uh, but then she's like, this isn't 
where we end this is actually the beginning mm-hmm. which is cool uh, I don't know if I want to spoil this movie for people yeah it's a tough one <laughs> I mean the payoff is so good I mean that's what makes the movie up there, yes. is, that, is that payoff uh, I, I without going to probably already gave, a, gave away enough of it you think so? <laughs> I think we already did yeah <laughs> people are going to figure it out now they're going to be like oh uh, but yeah it's Basically, she is time traveling in her head, and that's not even time traveling. It's no, she's just she's remembering everything. Yeah, you know, from, from the wants, point basically. from the point where she learned the language, she can remember anything from from there on into the future. Yes, learning, learning the language altered her thought. As Robert said, altered her thought processes. So then she writes a book about you know how to learn the language, so then everybody can learn it. So then I guess everybody's going to have that ability at one point. Yeah, because you have to not even fully understand it. Just once you get a certain understanding of it, mm-hmm. you you learn the time's not linear. And which I thought was weird because she never like her husband. I guess she never because he was in the process of learning it too, kind of. Yeah. But she, he, I guess she never taught him everything that she knew that so that he could learn the language to be able to see ahead in time or or not. Because he got upset when she told him something. I'm assuming the choice of actually marrying him and knowing that their kid was going to die of cancer yeah. is probably what made him leave. Yep. Yeah. So that means he didn't know. Yeah. He, couldn't, he couldn't see past that. Which is weird because like you said, like he was there right next to her and actually helped her crack a few things. So like, why why wouldn't he be able to? I guess, I guess she just went deeper into the language. Yeah. So she was a, a language specialist. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, but the acting by everybody is fantastic. I've questioned the Forrest Whitaker's uh, Bostonian accent a little mm. bit. <laughs> the <laughs> cop and the pot down there. <laughs> it didn't bother me too much. Uh, but yeah, he, he is normal. He's, that dude's always great. Um, Amy Adams is her name. She did, she did fantastic. Um, She's got those eyes that just make you mean you can't help but feel something when you look at her. Like you can tell. Yeah, she, she can really pull it off. Like yeah. a pained look. She can make sympathy very, yeah. Makes me sympathize with her. Uh, uh, and Jeremy Renner, like I said, he hits his comedic notes just like he normally did as Hawkeye. Um, and it's kind of a, uh, I like the way it makes you think about human nature, like our natural. You know, I mean, almost in all these sci-fi movies, like humans make the same mistakes when they come in contact with aliens and they attack them. Mm-hmm. So, which is basically what was going to happen in this movie. But yeah, and it, it kind of goes uh, Watchmen style by making us all come together with this big, you know, mm-hmm. big bet, which is cool. Um, and the way she was able to pull that off. Yes. I mean, that, that was just crazy. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, we won't get to the exact details because it, even if we did, still go watch this movie because it's just an amazing, amazing movie and takes solely original takes. I can see why it's getting such good ratings all over the place. Um, and it's shot wonderfully too. I, I love the the way they do when she goes into their atmosphere mm-hmm. for the first time, uh, which happens way late in the movie. But yeah, she goes into their atmosphere and, and the way her hair flows and they kind of do this kind of... Uh, smoky effect around her it, it's very cool um but the radiation thing like i, I find it funny that even though her and, and uh Hawkeye took off their radiation suits the, the soldiers still were there as well. yeah well they're probably just following orders they're probably supposed to stick to their protocols true but i like how they had the canary in there and she was like looking at the canary she's like well the canary's not dead so i'm gonna take this one up mm-hmm. yeah okay just a very original movie, and, I, and, and uh, I'm probably gonna, probably gonna watch it a couple more times to try to get a better understanding of it. Because uh, he talks time travel and space in the movie, and I'm so set for set for life. Uh, so, do you have? Wait, let's wrap up for that. Right? Okay. Uh, go see the arrival. Uh, do you have a favorite space franchise or movie? Favorite space franchise or movie? Mm, I'm gonna say no, not really a favorite. I mean, there's some standouts that are kind of weird. Like Event Horizon is, mm-hmm. is a really good movie, standout wise. That's something I wanted to bring up to you. 
because we talked about horror movies and sci-fi movies separate. That is definitely a sci-fi horror. Yeah, you can, I just I call it horror, but it does have some heavy sci-fi elements in it. <laughs> but I, I just think it's horror for, for me. But that that's a standout one yeah. as far as space space movies go. I mean, there's been some really good ones lately, like with Guardians of the Galaxy and mm -hmm. and stuff like that. <laughs> but like, I don't really have a favorite franchise as far as space movies go. Not a fan of Aliens. I'm a fan of the Aliens, but it's just I wouldn't say that's Bakery, like a favorite. Like, like me, it's crazy. For me, like <laughs> a couple of them stand out. Like the first one I love. The second one I think for me is the best one. Mm -hmm. Third one I, I wasn't too crazy about. Yeah. You know, Resurrection was all right. You know, yay! Yeah. It's just I, they became full blown action movies as they went progressed. Yeah, but for me, like the, the second one is, is would be another for me stand out just mm -hmm. because it was just so crazy. Uh, for me, do you see like that one? It, it was good, but again, it wasn't like it stood out to me. It didn't really, I don't know, blow my mind with anything new. It was just, you know, your typical. We'll see what they do with this next one. Uh, but yeah, Alien, like I just said, Alien is my, my favorite. Um, so yeah, that's, that's up there for me. I love, I love that series and I love Ripley. Ripley is, she does it for me. She does like the definition of heroine for me. Yeah, the second one, she was like the main hero. So it's yeah. like, I mean, like, Cause not, not just not just hero, but like she like was the most, you know, BA out of all of them. Like exactly. it was like, you know, military soldiers and all those kinds of people on there. Mm -hmm. But she's the one that actually, you know, wins the day. Yeah, and, and I love her evolution. You get to see all of these, her coming out of her shell in the first one. And she's still kind of scared, but she's learning. You, know? you like the third? <sighs> That's the prison one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that one was. Like, they tried to go back to the same feel of the first, you know, kind of a stalkery one note. Right. But I did like the end of the third, where she realizes that, you know, there's a, there's a queen of her, that sort of thing. Uh, I, I, the fourth I liked mainly because a lot of people hate that one, but mainly because she's this hybrid of both, and she plays it very well. I think. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I mean, it's just I just didn't think. Yeah, compared to like, the other ones. Yeah, compared to the other ones, yeah. especially number two. I mean, you can't. For me, you can't beat number two. Exactly. But yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Two is very close to me for for that one. Like for one, I just love. I don't know why, but just. Love the thing I love about Prometheus is how they kind of threw back to one and you saw all that ship and everything. Um, what about the Predator ADP series stuff? I, I don't care for those at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like Predator, I like the first one, that's my favorite one. Yeah, uh, second one, I wasn't too crazy about. I don't know, it was because of Danny. Yeah, or, too old for this. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it just didn't <laughs> gel with me. But the first one, I, I used to, I remember watching that when I was young, I just loved it. Let's watch it over and over again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but the but the AVPs, I just didn't care for them. I like the first AVP because there was so much kind of I don't know backstory. I, I I I'm on the edge about like how the predators were were coming down and using us uh, to train with the aliens and they know about the aliens and all that. Because I I I've read just about every alien novel that comes out, so I'm trying to dig as deep as I can into like the backstory of them. So I think it's cool that they kind of have been using the aliens for centuries. Because nobody still knows where the aliens have come from exactly. But, yeah, they know that if one gets out, they have to blow up everything. I thought that was cool in the first one. But then Requiem just was like, how much guts and blood can we put into this, you know? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's Avatar. I guess that's another one I enjoy. It's... Yeah, it's a the space things movie. Yeah, that's uh, the, the graphics for that. I, I'm very excited to see what they do with the next three or half a million they're making because he's making the time right now and they've confirmed for four, I believe, too. So hmm. we'll see where they go with that. Uh, let's. I know there's. Oh, uh, Pandora. Did you see that one? Yes, that was that. That was very good. I enjoyed that one a lot because I liked the. Uh, oh wow, I don't know. Bring up his name. I really like him, and he doesn't get enough credit, and he's still not getting enough credit because I'm forgetting his name right now. Mm. He was the wanderer in uh, Thirty Days of Night, uh, and in Three Tenth in Yuma, he was a very fantastic cowboy in that, and he just had that fantastic film, Hello High Water, uh, the new Bank Robber movie came out, and. 
Anyway, I'll just give you his accolades. Look him up. He's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and Pandora, my thought, was great. I, I didn't expect that ending. I wasn't a super fan of it, but I still didn't see it coming, so I thought that was, that was pretty cool with that. Um, that takes us to trailers. 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 Uh, I saw, sticking and it fits, actually, the space thing. So the director of director and writer of Fifth Element has been working on a movie called Valoran. And it's based off a graphic novel. And it looks amazing. Have you seen this trailer? I have not seen this trailer. It is a space kind of Odyssey film. It's about two agents, one Valoran and his partner, uh, a female. The kid who played, uh, he was the bad guy in... What's the movie where they get superpowers? Uh, that one goes bad. Yeah. Oh. Stuff to see. Right. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, I took my time. I'm putting you on the spot. Sorry. Right. <laughs> I forgot it myself. But anyway, the bad guy in that movie, bad kid in that movie, is the star of this. And they are detectives, space kind of agents who police. The universe. It's Valorant. The full title is Valorant and the City of a Thousand Planets. The Chronicle? What's that? Chronicles. Chronicles. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, he and his partner are called into action because they, some universe is broken, some Federation laws, and they have to go and do this. The visuals are amazing. The aliens look awesome, and it seems to, to have that same quirkiness that Fifth Element did, mm -hmm. and it looks amazing. Uh, I recommend looking that one up. Yeah, check that out. Uh, but yeah, check out that trailer. Uh, what about you? Uh, well, one I just saw today, I've seen it before, but is uh, The Cure for Wellness. Cure, yeah, okay. I mean, it just looks crazy to me. It looks confusing. It looks mm -hmm. like it's got a huge mystery going on, big reveal at the end. So I'm definitely in for that one. Yeah, I, I saw the trailer for that too. And I, like I said before, I was a little lost, but that's a good thing. I, I don't like to see everything about the movie in the trailer. Uh, hold something back from it. Uh, let's see. I got a little trailer for today, guys. And uh, next... We're moving a little quick here, but uh, I wanted to actually talk about this next series. We just watched Star Trek Beyond, and I wanted to ask you what you what was your favorite of the three? Uh, probably the second one was my favorite, then then the, the first, and then then this one was my least. This favorite. Yeah, I, actually, this is going to be the second movie that we have, uh, second franchise, I guess, that we've agreed on. Because the uh, second one was my favorite, too. And because of Khan. I love what they did yep, with Khan. He made that movie. I thought he was awesome. Uh, which a lot of people, the Trekkies, or Trek, Trek, Trekkers, I don't want to. Trekkies, I don't want them to come at me. They're dangerous <laughs> bunch. But they did not, they don't like this franchise anyway because it veers so much from the original. Uh, it's supposed to, I mean, so. Exactly, yeah. And I'm not. Uh, I never watched the original series. I know that might get me in trouble, but I've never seen the one with the uh, uh, second one, the Next Generation. Never saw any Next Generation. Deep Space Nine. I watched Deep Space Nine. I didn't watch that because he used to come on Fox and I used to watch it before I go to bed. Uh, but I did not watch the one with uh, William Shatner. Yeah, I didn't watch that. I tried to start it, but it just it didn't feel Star Trek to me. I just couldn't get into it. I, I didn't. I didn't. I watched a little bit of the first one, mm -hmm. but I just wasn't into it. I think it was mostly because of William Shatner and the acting. I just didn't <laughs> like it. But then, like, probably just pissed some people off. We love Star Trek. But then Next Generation came out, and I just absolutely loved That's it. That's John Luke Picard, right? Yep, John Luke Picard, Patrick Stewart. I just love Next Generation, and then I got into Deep Space Nine. Came right after that, mm -hmm. and then I watched a little bit of Voyager, but I, I couldn't. Really the quantum leap theme? Uh, no, that's not. That's the one where they get. It's a female captain, and they get lost in space somewhere. Okay. And they're trying to find their way back. And yeah, like you said, the one with the quantum leap guy. I didn't. I couldn't get into that one. But yeah, and I always like the oddballs because they always like Next Generation had a really good oddball, which was Data. Mm. And then uh, Deep Space Nine had a really good oddball. That was Odo. He was the security guy. Okay, yeah, yeah. The guy's the shapeshifter. Yeah. And I think uh, Voyager had, I think it was a holographic doctor instead of a real person. It was like a hologram, which yeah, I thought sure. was kind of kind of sweet. But, yeah, I always like the oddballs. And he can touch those. people? 
he could somehow do something with him. I don't know. I don't remember if he was actually physically touching him or not. <laughs> but yeah, he was able to take care of people. What was this guy uh, in uh, Deep Space Nine with the big ears? Uh, oh, I can't remember his name. He was, like, he was like kind of a con artist. Yeah. Uh, when I did watch all the way through, and it's not Star Trek, but it's made by Gene Roddenberry, uh, Andromeda with Kevin Sorbo, that I loved. And the ships in Beyond, Star Trek Beyond, remind me of the Magog ships that kind of puncture the hole and then open up and let you in, which has been done in a lot of uh, space film, but I just reminded me of that. But yeah, I, I don't know what it was. I guess I always loved the Hercules and Xena series, so I followed Kevin Sorbo from there. But the storyline of this captain who... Uh, did you ever watch Andromeda? No. No? He's a captain who gets uh, at the peak of the... All the space nations coming together. The Commonwealth is what they call it. Uh, they, they form... Nietzscheans, I guess I should start here. Nietzscheans are this uh, race who have were genetically modified humans and they kind of broke off into their own races and found their own factions. They're kind of like wolves. They have like, I'm the Kodiak pride. I'm the, you know, such and such pride. And they were with the humans. And they turned on the humans at the peak of the Commonwealth and destroyed the Commonwealth. And during the war that that happens in, Kevin Sorbo's character, uh, Dylan Hunt gets frozen in time because they are right next to an event horizon. And then jump, I think, 3,000 years in the future or something like that, 300 maybe, I forget. But he gets pulled out of the event horizon, and he is awoken to this broken down commonwealth. So he makes it his mission to uh, put the commonwealth back together. And he has this ragtag group of people, like one Nietzschean, uh, android, this crazy cat lady who nobody knows what she is, a human who went through the war, so he, and he had to suffer through camps of Nietzsche and the tax of the, it's, it's cool. I'm going off from a tangent here because it's... It does sound familiar. I may have watched a couple of episodes of that. It was one of my favorite shows, and there was an episode where, uh, did you ever watch Hercules and Xena? Yeah, I watched both of those. Uh, where Eolus from Hercules kind of, he plays a different role in there, but they kind of meet each other, they look at each other, and they glance like, have I met you before? <laughs> I love that, stuff like that, but... Yeah, that's that. But Star Trek Beyond. Um, first thing I want to say, they wasted Idris, Idris Elba because I think he's a fantastic actor and most of it he was covered up and you didn't even really know it was him. And he's crouching around. Uh, and then suddenly his plan was just kind of bleh. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, whole, the plan was ridiculous. I don't even get why they did that. but he, He's just... Uh, old star captain who's been stranded and he wants now revenge because he feels they forgot about him and <laughs> now he wants to kill everyone for that even though he's still in youth which they never explain how he still is youth and it was some kind of technology they found yep. <laughs> uh, this one was actually written halfway by Simon Pegg which is why we saw Scotty so much I think but uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It, I like the still like the dynamic between the crew, like the main crew, um, which is something else that bothers me. They put a lot of emphasis on how important the crew was in this one. Those starships are massive. They have crews of hundreds, maybe thousands. The crew gets captured. Why the hell is it always just those main six or seven? <laughs> You have a cruise of 100, but you, you send your captain and your, your highest ranking officers are the ones who are always putting their lives at risk. Mm -hmm. What the heck is that? I do not know. Uh, but I think every, Bones, I love. Like, I find myself laughing out loud to that dude all the time. And he's such a good actor because you wouldn't think that that was Judge Dredd as well. <laughs> but yeah. Um, who's your favorite from this, this set? Do you have a favorite? Uh, I, I'm liking Spock. I'm, Spock. Liking the, I'm liking the way he's playing Spock. But, like, overall, like, back to the crew, it's just kind of weird because everybody's just, like, really, really young and, and fit and hot. It's just like a bunch of, you know what I mean? It's just like a bunch of hot people throwing on the ship together and they're all wearing, like, skimpy uniforms like the girls that like, were wearing the dresses. It's really short. It just didn't seem, it just seems, like, over the top to me. And, yeah, you got the main players, which I like. There's no real... Uh, 
character development in this one. They pretty much rely on seeing, you know, yeah. watching the first two movies, so you already know what's you're up to speed on everybody's relationship. And they just they dive right dive right into it. Mm. it. It is entertaining overall. I mean, it was it was a fun movie to watch, but it was just kind of a letdown. Like just like they could have shortened it by you know forty five minutes and made it a really good TV episode or something. Yeah. But just for us for a movie, I just don't think it it wins. I would, I would love to see this crew as. You know, a TV crew, but and they are going to make a series based off of the movies universe. Uh, but I don't think these guys are going to be in it. They're too all too big. Chris Pine has things to do, and uh, so the seller. But right, making money. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you have? We, I guess both. Of, we just said both of our favorite villains from this series is Khan. Uh, what do you think of Nero from the first one? Uh, is it Eric Bana has played him, I think? It doesn't compare to Khan. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like his, uh, he kind of had a goofiness about him. He, you know, we're going to fire your Spock, that whole. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed it. Well, like you said, he doesn't compare to Khan. Khan was Benedict Cumberbatch, did a fantastic job with Khan, I thought. What did you think of the new hero in this one? The, the chick? The chick with the. Uh, like. They kind of like she. She really didn't. If you, if you ask me, she didn't do much. Like, cause she kicked the good guy's butt, but she couldn't really hammer herself against the bad guy. So like, she's just running away from it. Which what happened to that bad guy? Did he just get left on the planet. I guess. Yeah. Like, he's this big. She tells this huge story about how he killed her family and how she doesn't want to go back there because of him. And he even mentions as they're fighting, it's you know, that you're gonna die here like your father. And I just kind of leave. Yeah, I just poof, it's over. <laughs> I, I do like how he, like Kirk saved her, though. That was pretty sweet. That was cool. It was a good acting scene. Oh, but don't you think that they're using these these uh, uh, teleportation cliffhangers quite a bit? Because they did it a lot in the last one, too, mm-hmm. where he's last ditch. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. But they broke. This is true, I guess, yeah. Um, there was a scene here... And if anybody knows, please tell me. And I don't have a problem with this. I just didn't know it. Is Sulu's character gay? Like, I'm, not, I'm not for sure. I don't think they really mention it at all in these movies. You, you get a glimpse of something that, you know, maybe makes you think he is. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the actor who played in the original series. Yeah, Ghost Takai. He turned out being, but he, I don't think he was on the show. He wasn't on the show. I don't, I don't think he was. Maybe that's a nod to George Takai, you know? More than likely. Yeah. Which I didn't have a problem with. I thought it was cool. Exactly, yeah, yeah. I'm all about that whole piece of, piece of love with everybody. Hugs. Um, <laughs> you see that free hugs guy who walks around giving people free hugs? Mm. Like, there's a, I see the videos on Facebook all the time, but there's a, a dude who wears a shirt that says free hugs, and at first he started going to different like Trump rallies and Clinton rallies and he just asks people for free hugs and some a lot of people do it they hug him and he just walks away keep giving people hugs he's trying to spread joy and happiness and peace between everyone um he did it with the cops recently which I thought was pretty cool like he walked up to cops who were protesting some or not stopping protesters at somewhere and he started giving them hugs and a lot of them recognized him and did it I don't know what would have happened if they didn't recognize him but <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry, that's I might have heard there. Star Trek. <laughs> um, yeah, this one I don't know. Like it, it had its moments. It's just the the main plot for the villain I thought was very lacking and kind of not there. Like he didn't really have a reason to. I guess maybe he felt through enthralled enough to go and kill a colony. Which let's get to that colony killing because. The Star the Starfleet has built a giant uh, colony where everyone in this in the Starfleet and Star Command and you know the Federation sorry I'm just, just lacking on that word but everyone in the Federation can come and there's millions of people here and it's kind of like a giant snowball as Bones <laughs> described it and there's millions of people there and there's a big kind of dome thing and there's several little entrances. That ships go into so they don't penetrate the dumb thing. Now we see as the, the Starship Enterprise is destroyed yet again uh, by Idris Elba's swarm. 
He has a ship, a swarm of a kind of a hive mind, I guess it would be described. They look like a bunch of bees just flying around and they decimate, they puncture holes, they cut through ships. They are completely destructive. And we see this because they completely destroy every inch of the Enterprise. Um, and then he gets to this base and he sends them at the doors. There's t- <laughs> like, is it, was it a shield? Is that why he didn't do it? I'm not for sure. The, the, the whole thing is 95% glass, it looks to be, or shield, I'm not sure which, but he just is sending his swarm at these little doors instead of just penetrating the glass. Maybe it was a shield, maybe that's why he didn't do it, but they don't explain it either way. Only to take his secret weapon, which is a mini little swarm thing that eats whatever it touches alive. Yeah, it's like this little, this little a swarm of like nanotechnology looking things that like eat everything, I guess, and can disintegrate your body. And he wants to put it in the air conditioning unit of this giant <laughs> base. Basically. Uh, so that it kills everyone. And yeah, that was what yeah. he wanted to do. That was he spent his... like was a hundred, like a hundred years, centuries, look, looking hundreds of years looking for this one little bit, you know, bit of this weapon. When he had that swarm the entire time, he could have just went and straight, destroyed. straight to that base and just completely shredded it. But he didn't. And like, when did he come up with this plan? Like, he's been looking for this piece for centuries, but that star base was apparently fairly new. He probably didn't have a target yet. He just yeah. knew he wanted to use that weapon against uh, them. Against the Federation. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, and then we, as during that fight scene, we finally find out that it is, in fact, Idris Elba playing this guy. Uh, I'm sure everyone's seen this movie already because it's been out for a while, but it, I don't know. I Like, it, it was fun. It still held up the fun of the, Star, the new Star Trek franchise, and I did enjoy that aspect of it, but as far as it's kind of... Yeah. <laughs> it was fun to watch. It was just kind of weak. Yeah. You know, I don't know how to really describe it. It just didn't really, like, I don't know. The last one, I mean, after following the last one, I guess everything is going to seem, you know, mm-hmm. got it, hold it to a higher level after the, the last one. So this one just didn't, <gasps> just didn't meet, meet that level. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, that's space, guys. The final frontier. And no one can hear you scream there. Nope. Let's remember that. Um, did you want to get our lower half matched up? Sure. At least the first, uh, the bottom four, I guess. Um, we're talking about the movie Bad Guy Tournament. And we, I don't know if you went to go watch movie.com in the podcast section, all the, our entire lists are listed there. Um, just want to match up the bottom half just to kind of get things going and I'll get the bracket pulled out. Once we do that, let me put my list here. Um, okay. So my bottom 10 are Miles, the uh, Colonel from Avatar. He's number 10 for me. And then Carnage from the book, the main bad guy of the Book of Eli. That's your number 10 and number 9? Yeah. Well, my number 10 is Fletcher from the movie Whiplash, and my number 9 was Stansfield from Leon the Professional. Mm. Okay, okay. So, I'm thinking we match up Miles from Avatar with Stansfield. What do you think? Okay, yeah. Uh... I mean, see, I haven't seen Whiplash, so I don't know much about Fletcher. Like, yeah. The grand thing was grand scheme of things. How 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 is he like? He he's just a jerk, basically. He's just like basically the biggest jerk, but and he like but he has influence over people, so he can try to get people to do what he wants them to do. Mm. But he tears through people to try to get to what he wants, which is to have somebody give an amazing performance. But he just tears down people to try to get that. Gotcha. Also, uh, sorry, I forgot. Actually, we had a couple submissions, um, people, so we can actually, if we want to, substitute. Uh, Jaws, there were a couple people who thought Jaws should be on the list. Really? Um, <laughs> he, he, uh, he, like, I don't know if they understood kind of what we're going with, like, kind of an overall plan and 
how well they're accomplishing that plan. Mm-hmm. He ate a lot of people. He did. <laughs> uh, but and there was also Michael Myers. Uh, actually, Steve he was on number one of Steve's list, a friend of ours. Um, I, once again, he doesn't. Really, he just kills. Like he doesn't really have a plan. Uh, but I don't mind replacing somebody of mine if we want to put him on there. Um, but I, I, like I said, I'm shooting kind of for overall plan, and that was his number one on the list he gave me. Let me see. I'm searching this. Um, and Leon had Leon was I thought was awesome. Um, I haven't seen that movie in a while, but Leon was awesome. Do you think? Uh, like, how, do you know how old she was when she made that movie? I do not know. Because she was very Pretty young. Very uh, over the top. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> she plays that that role very well. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking at the list here. Um, Hans Gruber was another one. I'm trying to remember from Die Hard. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember his overall plan. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. I like that one. I think for the sake of things, we can add Hans Gruber to the list. And uh, just to get some fan involvement. Okay. So, if we put Miles against... Who's your number 10? Fletcher from Whiplash. Fletcher against Carnage? Is that, is that what we're doing? Or and, and and the idea I have for this is kind of just putting like what if Fletcher was in the Book of Eli world and what if Carnage was in the Whiplash world? So we kind of even the playing field, you know, so it's not mm-hmm. just one sided. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and that's kind of what I want to go with here. And the same with uh, Miles and Spanchville. Spanchville, thank you. Um. You know, what if Stensville was in the Avatar world? <laughs> mm. <laughs> what if Miles was in the Leo world? Like, kind of, because cause you, otherwise you kind of have, when we get further down this list, things are going to get pretty crazy. <laughs> so, and then uh, Hans Gruber, my number eight was Bill the Butcher. Mine was Harad from The Quick and the Dead. Ooh. Ooh. Hans Gruber against Harad. I yep. think that that'll uh, that'll be a good a good matchup. We're gonna have an oddball, so we might have to think of another one. But uh, I like that because uh, I think in a Die Hard world, Harad would do pretty amazing. Like, cause he he was running that town with Iron Fist. And I'm, I'm, I feel confident that he could uh, elevate himself back to that level in that diehard universe. Right. And then Hans is Hans, you know, he just, he can, he can do it. He can, he can cast a spell as Severus, if not. So, <laughs> uh, and I'll go ahead and get that bracket made up. Um, I think that's going to be all for this week. Because uh, I don't have anything else. I got nothing. Uh, so yeah, that bottom half of that bracket is gonna go up on the website, uh, and listen. <laughs> Sorry, Charles plays on TV, and uh, good guys, dogs waving. But I'm Calvin, and I'm Robert. Go watch a movie. <laughs>